which was founded in 1980 by a conductor named William Boughton. Right. Originally, it was the English String Orchestra. Gradually, they started adding winds and doing bigger repertoire. Mm -hmm. The orchestra continues to play as both English String Orchestra and English Symphony Orchestra. And one of the things I find most appealing about the group is that the size of orchestra that we feel, of course, we arranges from sort of tiny little you know, 12 piece string ensembles up to Elgar symphonies. This is big for us, you know, a big Brahms symphony with full strings. Well, the biggest challenge, obviously, is it starts with its roots in piano, and piano plays comfortably at extremes of register in a way that orchestral instruments right. don't. So you have to make a lot of hard choices about what octave things are in, you know, whether that starts to create clashes, because he thinks very carefully, not having everyone all slammed in the same register. You know, if you think basically the top part of the piano, you're going to use very sparsely with the symphony orchestra. And also the nature sort of piano figuration, which he understood so well, his piano writing is incredibly idiomatic. A lot of that doesn't work on orchestral instruments at all. But it's a slippery slope because there are things where you look at them initially and you think, well, that's a figuration and I can change it to anything as long as the pitches are right. But then actually you'll take little bits of the figuration and turn it into motives and themes. It's thematic, yeah. You have to be very, very careful. And so I would say in some ways there's stuff in this that's more virtuosic than you would find in the symphonies. But just because of that necessity of staying close to the piano. There's some sort of specific challenges that come up in the piece. There's this famous passage early in the second adagio, which in the original sounds almost like a harp. One of the fascinating things about doing early Brahms is the fact you see the sort of youthful energy and ardor and vitality of this last one. It's just party music. A lot of it, you know, yeah. it's a uh, very earthy, very rustic, and uh, you know, not too sober. To me, the the whole quartet is very much a sort of love letter to nature. There's so much of the outdoor world, you know, Brahms, I think some of his most touching and personal music is that sort of spirit of the outdoors. 